All right, so we are now at a very interesting point in the course as we sort of rush towards the conclusion. We went through the, the, the foundations, uh, basically some variable stuff, so how to control the flow through the program with the if and else's and loops. We went ahead and um, dealt with how to break a program down to, to chunks, basically, and create your own functions, uh, which can be reused. We uh, dealt with the idea of file exceptions, reading and writing. We dealt with what happens if things go wrong. I'd say everything up to chapter nine is, is your absolute fundamentals in any kind of language. We're shifting gears a little bit to talk about object-oriented programming. And I will tell you that the book is okay. Um, W3 Schools has got a very interesting kind of take on this with classes. Uh, and then Python for Everyone, which is a link in the material, but you can also see it right there, is uh, it, it's got a nice little lecture on it. So I definitely encourage you to look at that because uh, these topics will be important. What I'd like to do is, um, rather than just repeating a lot of the code that's in the book, I want to basically go off and sort of remind you of where we've been and then kind of start going more into this um, uh, objects oriented programming uh, using the visualizer here. So I will remind you that basically if I said that uh, my name, I want to create a variable, I'm going to go grant and I'm going to basically print the type of what that is. So this is going to create a variable, it's going to assign it that string, this is going to tell me what kind of variable is type or is name, sorry. So I'm going to go next and we go fly to the end and notice that it's sitting in memory. This double quotes kind of indicates the string, but when I actually asked, it also basically said that this variable is of the class of string. Great, wonderful. Um, not hard to imagine, by the way, if I ch change my name to 10, which would be a pretty horrible name, but if I did that, it now 10 is an integer and it's the class of integer. If it's 10.0, you'll remember that this guy here is going to be of the class of float. All right, so there's a, some of the basic simple ones. Now, we can go a little bit further here and have, uh, let's say that uh, I wanted my name to be names and have a list of names, list of names. So I'm gonna put it in square brackets and go Grant, I'm gonna go Fred. Okay, so Grant and Fred. And now I'm gonna say, what actually is names? And I'm gonna go visualize, hit run to the end, so it's a list, too big to stick in here. So they got a little pointer pointing out. It's a list and it's of the class list. Awesome. Uh, what if I used rounded parentheses? Then you might remember, hey Grant, that's probably going to be a tuple. And there it is. It's a tuple and it's of the class tuple. All right, what if I wanted to do a dictionary? Dictionary is a little bit more interesting with the um, screwing around with the uh, with the case here but if I want if I want a sort of a names dictionary um, whoops let's just go up the that and stick in name and then go zzz. so names I'm gonna say names is a curly brace so the grant uh, name and uh, and then some kind of value with that which I'll just say. Oh, I don't know, age 53, sounds good. All right, so I'm gonna do that. Um, and then I'm gonna ask, well, what actually is Dick names? And I go and do that and I go visualize and I go find the end. So this guy is a dictionary and it's of the class dictionary. Well, what if I told you, you could make your own class? You don't have to have one of these ones that just come with, uh, with Python. When you import some modules, you'll get some new classes that way too that deal with uh, you know interesting data constructs. But what if you want to make your own class? What if you would like to create a pet class? So I'm going to go and create a class called pet. All right. So I'm going to create a class called pet, and um, and I need to basically say, well, what actually is in that? So at this point. Let's say that the we, we're gonna have the name, it's gonna have a name, actually, by the way, let's go P name. So pet name, names a little, never name your variables like name, type, date, you gotta put something in front of it. But anyway, so that's gonna be initialized to nothing. And type, I suppose, that's gonna be initialized to nothing. All right, first of all, what does that look like in memory? And what it looks like in memory is it looks like um, a 
thing that's pointing to a class. I've got myself a new class now. And so what I could do is have a pet. And I'm going to dedicate this lecture here to my sadly recently departed cat, Oreo. Oreo was a wonderful cat, and Oreo sadly passed away. So how would I do this? Well, Oreo is a pet. By the way, this is not how you do it, but this is as we introduce ourselves to it. So Oreo is a pet. All right, so now let's run that and see what that's going to look like. And so here you go. These guys are both pointing to the same pet class. Oreo is a pet. And so if I now basically said Oreo dot P name is assigned Oreo, which is kind of a dumb thing to do, but uh, maybe the name of the pet is the name of the object. I don't know. Oreo uh, dot P type is assigned cat. And we go go. And we go go. Right there, sitting in memory is is uh, is Oreo. Now, as I kind of said, this is not really the way we'd be doing this because, for one thing, if I did have another pet, uh, which I certainly did, I had uh, Starbuck, my daughter's, and it was um, also we'll say a pet. And uh, if I go Starbucks a pet, and then I basically say Starbuck dot name so let's just basically screw out the name is equal to uh, Starbuck watch what happens here I'm going to do this visualization a bit more oops a bit more slowly Oreo is pointing to the same class and it kind of you know we get Oreo cat now we get Starbuck Starbuck ends up pointing to the same class and so we end up overriding Oreo that's not really the way to do this what we need to do is uh, not so much create a class, but create an object. So, um, to do that, we are going to just shift it a little bit. What happened there? Oreo is no longer now a class. It's an instance of the class. As we go next, that instance has Oreo. That instance has, oh, I went to the end there. That wasn't very anticlimactic. That instance has cat. And then as we go, Starbuck gets created as an instance. And Starbuck now has a name. So we now have two instances or two objects that are of this class. A class is basically a blueprint for objects. And we can stamp out as many particular pets as we want. We can have a list of pets. What happened here is by putting these parentheses in there, it, what it did is it basically said, I don't want you to override the blueprint. I want you to create something of the blueprint. Or as we're going to see in a minute, I want you to construct something from the blueprint. This idea of, uh, I, I don't know if these guys were architects or whatever that came up with this but you know just like you'd have a blueprint for a house and you can have one blueprint and create many instances of that blueprint in your neighborhood that's kind of what's going on here uh lines one through three is the blueprint for what a pet is and line five and line nine is where i create an object of that blueprint all right so let's uh let's get a p type in there and uh P type, and this guy is going to be a guinea pig. And oops, and I'll tell you this um, I'm way too tired to try type guinea pig, so I'm just going to go with GP. My apologies to any guinea pig fans out there, but that's what I'm going to do. So if I visualize the execution, boom, at the end of the day, I got these two guys. Now, if I want to, now this is me putting information in. If I want to get information out, well, then maybe what I could do is go print, except in the right case, print Oreo. You know, Oreo, Oreo dot P name. Okay, concatenated with a is a and then Oreo dot uh, P type. All right, and let's uh, do the same thing with our buddy Starbuck. Where's Starbuck? There you go, boom, boom. Visualize the execution, and it's mad because uh, why are you mad? Oh, because there's no plus there. 
No concatenation. All right. Visualize the execution, get rid of my chain, go to the end, boom. So there's our print statements at the top there. So notice again, we're kind of going to the Oreo object, going to uh, that particular attribute. I probably didn't actually say that earlier. I should have said that. But the um, the variables inside of an object would be considered the attributes. Okay, so that's the attributes. Both of these, the name and the type, describe the the object. So they're called attributes. Great, wonderful. So what you might want to do. Uh, I'm going to end this video here, and then um, this is not really how you would do it, but this is sort of letting you see some of the structures in memory. I would play around this with your own pets or, or whatever you want to do, and then, um, uh, uh, and then we're going to start going into some true object-oriented programming.